Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen watching on YouTube. Um, it's time to do part three of my DVD collection. Uh, first things first, obviously I've got to plug my podcast, The Iron Cast. It is fantastic. Go and uh, check it out. If you haven't already, there's a link in the description uh, for anyone who's interested in seeing my thoughts on various genres of music as well as a few other people. So let's get on with it. Right, the first thing I'm going to show today, Box of the Band. Um, this is released by Anchor Bay. This is six of the Video Nasties, plus the first part of a documentary about the Video Nasties. Um, so this has got on it, I Spit on Your Grave, Zombie Flesh Eaters, The Driller Killer, The Evil Dead, Last House on the Left, and Nightmares in a Damaged Brain. Um, all of which were titles prosecuted, um, well not all, uh, no they weren't all prosecuted but they were all sort of put on trial for obscenity in the UK in the early 80s. Um, this is quite a good set, um, one thing to watch out for if you are buying this set, the I Spit On Your Grave that's on there is heavily cut by about 7 minutes so don't don't bother with the, the I Spit On Your Grave that's on there, find a, you know, a, a, an import that's uncut. Uh, the Nightmares in a Damaged Brain that is on there is also uncut, is also cut, sorry, um, so you will need to get hold of an import of that, um, and I think The Last House on the left might be cut slightly, I could be wrong, but something in the back of my brain is telling me that it is cut. Um, now I'm not going to talk about these films, because I've got all of them, I mean I spoke about Nightmares in a Damaged Brain in my Blu-ray video. But the rest of these movies I do have on DVD, so I will be talking about them at some point. Um, although the documentary that's on here, Ban the Sadist Videos, part one of Ban the Sadist Videos, is a very interesting documentary about the period. Um, it looks at the uh, Obscene Publications Act, the Video Recordings Act. Um, all the stuff that happened in the early 80s is, is what is on this half of the documentary. Uh, so yeah, that's the box of the band. Uh, definitely not a, a bad set. And you can get that really cheap as well. You can get that used on Amazon for, like, I mean, mine was under a fiver, I think. So, um, you know, you can quite easily find it, you know, and uh, enjoy a few of those movies uh, uncut. Uh, this is Box of the Band 2. Um, now this one's a little bit more beaten up. This one's a little bit harder to come by. Um, so you're looking more at like about 20 quid for this. I mean mine was about 20 quid in, you know, pretty dog-eared condition. Um, but yeah, no, this is the second Box of the Band set. There hasn't been a third, but, uh, you know, I, I guess it could happen. Um, so this has Tenebrae, Contamination... Don't Go Near the Park, The Witch You Came From The Sea, Evil Speak, and the second half of Ban The Sadis videos. Um, I will talk about a couple of these movies. Tenebrae and Contamination I spoke about in my Blu-ray video, um, but I will be talking about the other three movies on this um, on this set. But first, I'll just mention Ban The Sadis videos quickly. Um, Ban the Sadis videos part two looks at the impact of the VRA on the British... Um, the British uh, video industry, it looks at um, kind of the ramifications, you know, people getting prosecuted for um, selling um, non-classified tapes, um, all that sort of thing. It looks at the, um, you know, the case with the James Bulger murder where um, a lot of people blame Child's Play Free for having something to do with it. It looks at all, all the stuff that sort of happened after the initial um, you know, uh, the, like the post video recordings act, um, you know, uh, controversies, you know. So let's look at the film. So Don't Go Near the Park is one of the ultimate um, so bad it's good movies. I mean, it really is. Um, it's basically about these, um, uh, these two, this pair of siblings who have to kill to drink the blood and, uh, maintain youth so it's kind of a vampire movie um but it is quite a confusing plot actually it's difficult to explain it all in um a sitting that you know people would pay attention to so i won't bother 
Um, but all you need to know is it is hilarious. There's some very funny. Um, there's some very very funny scenes in this that I would I would recommend you check out. The dialogue is hilarious, so don't go near the park. I definitely recommend, even though it's not very good. The Witch Who Came from the Sea. Mm, I'm a little bit mixed on that one. It's about um, a woman who was abused as a child and kind of uses her um you know she has like this desire to kill kill men she kills famous men and um that sort of thing she's kind of obsessed by fame it's a very interesting movie uh the title was a little bit uh a little bit misleading which you came from the sea but it is an interesting movie um so that one i guess i would suggest as well so overall we're, we're doing really well on this set and the last movie evil speak is a cult classic it's kind of like a cult version of Carrie um, so it's got uh, Clint Howard is the guy's name he's um, uh, some uh, yeah Clint Howard um, he plays Stanley Cooper Smith who is an orphan child at a military school who is bullied by pretty much everyone he's got like one he's got like two friends one his age and then like the caretaker or the chef or whatever at the school I think um, and he kind of discovers that the the school was built on the site of like a satanic like ritual uh, ground, and um, he uh, uncovers all this and um, starts using his computer to research like doing a satanic ritual to take revenge. Very very entertaining movie. Very gory towards the end. Not so much like throughout, but but gory towards the end. So I would recommend Evil Speak as well. So, I mean, all five of the movies on this box set are very, very good. Um, well, not, not very, very good, but very, very enjoyable. All right, next up, we have The Bunny Man Massacre. This is known in the US as Bunny Man. Um, I believe that the sequel in the US is actually called Bunny Man Massacre, so this this is definitely the first movie. I don't know what the, the set sequel is called in the UK, probably Bunny Man Massacre 2. Um, but yeah, no, this is uh, released by 101 Films. Um, it's about a group of kids who are driving through um, sort of remote California. Um, they uh, run into some problems, their car breaks down or whatever. And they start getting attacked by a guy dressed up as a bunny carrying a chainsaw. Um, it's a terrible movie, really not enjoyable at all, very slow, um, not particularly entertaining. Um, everything feels really hokey and fake about it. It's clearly made by someone who saw um, Texas Chainsaw and The Hills Have Eyes but did not understand what made those movies good. Um, it's also got one of the least disturbing torture scenes I've ever seen in a movie in it. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, that's pretty much all I've got to say on it. It's a fucking rubbish film. Um, claims to be based on a true story, um, but it's absolutely got nothing to do with Bunny Man Bridge, which is an urban legend you may know about if you're interested in that sort of thing. But yeah, no, this is a fucking terrible movie. Don't, don't bother with the Bunny Man Massacre. I only got it because it was cheap, a blind buy. Um, okay, so next up, the first film from Eli Roth, Cabin Fever. Um, yeah, this is a, a, a sort of quite entertaining horror comedy, um, obviously made on a very low budget. This is the film where I think Eli Roth proved that he had a lot of potential, which some would argue that he never fulfilled. Um, I can see that definitely, because I guess in in if we're, we're being you know honest here, this is probably his best movie. Um, yeah, so that's Cabin Fever. In terms of uh, special features, there's an interview with Eli Roth, a featurette, and uh, a couple of shorts. Um, I would imagine there's an audio commentary on it as well, but I can't remember at the moment. Uh, so that's Cabin Fever, pretty good movie. Alright, so we're getting into the word cannibal now, so there's going to be a few movies that all share the, f the same first letter. Uh, name uh, Cannibal Apocalypse. This is the Antonio Margheriti action horror movie with John Saxon. Um, who else did it? What's the other guy? Uh, Giovanni Lombardo Radici is the other guy who's also in it. Um, yeah, this is this is a very entertaining. Basically, um, it's about these um, uh, Vietnam War veterans who are suffering with. Um, post-traumatic stress disorder um, and uh, there's like cannibalism 
has become like a part of them. And when they bite someone, the cannibalism spreads like as a contagion. So it's kind of like it's more it's a zombie movie. It's not actually it's kind of lumped in with Italian cannibal movies, um, but it's not a um, it's not a cannibal movie because it doesn't deal with natives. It deals with um, it's set in the city and it's about you know Vietnam vets who are you know suffering some sort of horrific post traumatic stress disorder that makes them want to bite people. Um, so yeah, uh, Cannibal Apocalypse. Um, this DVD doesn't really have any special features to speak of, um, aside unless you count scene selection, you know. Um, but yeah, no, this is cut by about two seconds. Um, but it's an animal cruelty cut, so I can live with it. But I probably will upgrade the to the US import, which is totally uncut. But yeah, that's Cannibal Apocalypse. I would recommend that movie actually. That's a very good. A little bit slow, but if you can get around the sort of, you know, the fact that it is a bit slow, then you'll really enjoy it. Alright, next up we've got an import from uh, Europe, I believe, from Germany or somewhere like that, or um, it might be Switzerland, actually. This is Cannibal Ferox. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is um, obviously the notorious Umberto Lenzi movie that was um, obviously ripping on the... Um, the popularity of Cannibal Holocaust. I had to get this on import because it's cut by about six minutes in the UK. Um, so I decided to get this on import because obviously, to be honest, without the violence, this film is pointless. Um, it's not a very good story. It's very stupid. Um, ultimately, it falls a little bit on its ass because of that. Um, you know, and it does feel like an obvious take on Cannibal Holocaust. It's got a lot of the same the same sort of stuff in it that Cannibal Holocaust has. Um, in terms of special features, I mean, this has got all the trailers. Um, it's got subtitles. Um, it's quite a nice transfer, um, but it's still got that nice film grain thing going on. So, yeah, Cannibal Ferox. <sighs> I would recommend it, I guess, as a, a an interesting sort of thing historically, but... It's not a great movie. It's okay. Um, a little bit disturbing in places, but, you know, it's whatever. Cannibal Ferox. That's that. Next up, we have the shameless release of the classic Cannibal Holocaust. Now, I got this one because um, there's a reduced animal cruelty cut on it. So there's a cut on, of the film with absolutely no animal cruelty on it. Um, but that's all that's missing. All the violence and gore is still there. Um, so I got that because just, you know, obviously, um, well, it's a bit nasty, you know, obviously. Um, whole bonus disc. Um, so let's talk about Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust is a film about an expedition into the jungle to try and find... Um, uh, or find out what happened to a, 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 a documentary crew that went into the jungle to make a documentary about indigenous tribes. Um, when they managed to recover their footage and watch it back, they discover why the tribe, the, uh, the the crew went missing. They were, you know, doing all sorts of horrible things to the tribe, exploiting the tribe, and yeah. So, so yeah, this is Cannibal Holocaust. I think it's a great movie. Um, I do plan on getting a fully uncut version of this eventually, just so that I have it. But at the same time, I'm not going to, uh, you know, recommend it as a better version with the animal cruelty in. Because, you know, I, I personally find that a bit yucky. But, you know, whatever. So let's have a look at the uh, bonus features. So there's... Um, uh, there's a documentary on it um, that's interviews with... Um, uh, what's the guy's name? Gabriel York and uh, Ruggiero Diodato. So Gabriel York's the the lead actor um, of the documentary crew part of the film. Um, Ruggiero Diodato is the director of the movie. Um, so it's them, you know, re remembering the movie and whatnot. There's also a documentary called uh, The Long Road Back from Hell, which is all about the uh, history of Cannibal Holocaust. It being um, you know, seized in Italy and then being part of the Video Nasties scandal in the UK and 
um, you know, it being banned all over the world and, and whatnot. So that's very, very interesting to see. Um, it's got people like Kim Newman is, uh, is on it, um, and he is uh, one of the sort of talking head interviewees about the film. Um, it's also got theatrical trailers, and it's also got the, something that I like about Shameless DVDs, which is they've got the uh, Shameless trailer park on it. So you've got a pile of um, uh, trailers for other Shameless titles, so you can go through and pick out if there's anything you want to see, which is, which is really cool. So yeah, Cannibal Holocaust. I recommend it if you've got a very strong uh, stomach. It is a, a, an absolute gut-turning film, um, even without the animal violence. You know, the sexual violence and all that is just so intense. Very disturbing movie, but I would highly recommend it. It's a, it's a strong movie. Okay, next up we have another cannibal movie and another video nasty. This is Cannibal Terror. Um, awful movie, terrible, stupid badly made, poorly acted, everything that you imagine that could have gone wrong with this film did. It's not even really funny bad. There's a couple of funny bad uh, scenes in the film, but not that many. Um, no real special features on the disc. In fact, I think this one doesn't even have a menu, if I remember. It just goes straight into the film. It's one of those. Um, but yeah, no, this is uh, the same release that everyone gets. Um, so basically, a group of criminals... Um, take a girl, uh, a young girl hostage and head into the jungle um, but they get on the wrong side of the guy who's looking after them and he ends up leading them to the cannibals. That's the plot summary of Cannibal Holocaust, Holo um, not Cannibal, Cannibal Terror. Should never mix those two films up. Cannibal Holocaust is a great film, this is not. <laughs> yeah, Cannibal Terror, <sighs> don't watch it, it's fucking terrible. Um, you know, all the gore scenes and stuff. The cannibals are pathetic. There's one guy who's got um, some, like, a great 70s. Like, all the, all the cannibals are white. Um, I think it was made in France, or was it Spain? One of the two. So, um, all the cannibals are sort of, like, Iberian. Um, you know, sort of uh, Hispanic and whatever. So, they're not actually, you know, genuine native-looking uh, tribes like the in, you know, Cannibal Holocaust or whatever. But Cannibal Terror... Awful film. Don't watch it unless you unless you're a real sadist. And also, don't watch this one. This one's actually worse, I'd say. This is Cannibals, uh, directed by Jess Franco. Um, in the previous part, I spoke about him when it came to Bloody Moon. Uh, his films were fucking terrible. And uh, yeah, uh, so Cannibals is very much the exploitation equivalent of Ed Wood. So Cannibals is about a guy whose family is attacked by uh, cannibals. Um, obviously, uh, his wife is killed, his daughter's kidnapped. For some reason, like 20 years later, he uh, has forgotten all about this and then he suddenly remembers and goes into the jungle to try and find his daughter. Um, very stupid film. It's got Al Cleaver in it um, in one of the worst movies I've ever seen. As much as I like Al Cleaver for some of the other stuff he did, this is not a good film. This is fucking horrendous. Um, there's a lot of footage that it shares with Cannibal Terror. I think this one came first. Um, pretty much all the natives are white in this movie. Um, absolutely awful. Cannot stand it. Terrible movie. Uh, so that's all the Cannibal uh, title movies out of the way. Um, a few more to plough through here. Uh, first up, this is a Dario Argento movie. The first Dario Argento DVD I've shown, The Card Player. This is one of his more recent movies from uh, about 10 years or so ago. Um, the Card Player is a giallo type movie um, about a, a killer who challenges the police to play um, online video poker against him. And um, if they win, he won't he won't kill the, the victim. If they if he wins, he will kill the victim. So that's kind of the whole the whole sort of sum, summation of the plot interesting movie um it's pretty good i wouldn't i wouldn't you know go all out on it and say it's great and you should all see it but it does pass the time it's an entertaining enough movie there's enough twists and turns in it to keep people interested um and i really like argento's visual style so um yeah i've got i've got to, i've got to say i i, I, I do uh, i do enjoy this movie i'm quite a big argento fan um, as most horror fans are, you know. But that's the card player. 
Okay, next up we have Carrie. Um, I referred to Evil Speak earlier. Obviously, Carrie, a very similar movie. Um, uh, Sissy Spacek plays a girl who's sort of a, a, an outcast and ends up coming at the end, sort of taking revenge. Um, one stick on this one. Oh, it's got a booklet in it. Sorry, I only bought this uh, today, so I haven't even looked inside it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's a bunch of essays and stuff apparently from the looks of things. But yeah, that's Carrie. I won't I won't uh, dwell on it too long just cuz uh um you know, we've all seen Carrie, I think. Um and uh yeah, really good movie. Um I I I like Carrie. Good film. Um all the performances and stuff are great in it. Not such a good film, but definitely not the worst I've ever seen. Uh, Children of the Corn. Um, this has a uh, what's her name uh, Laura Hamilton from the Terminator uh, is it Laura Hamilton Linda Hamilton uh, yeah there she is uh, Linda Hamilton um, this is slightly before the Terminator I think um, so this is obviously based on it comes with a nice little uh, card insert I might stick that on the wall um, this is a film about a couple who are driving through this town and they discover um, that the town, uh, you know, there's no adults. All the children have um, taken over and stuff. I'd imagine it would have made a much better story than film because it is quite silly and, you know, parts where it's supposed to be scary come off as silly and, you know, the the main kid does his, like, best, like, sort of Bond villain style thing. Um, you know, he's, he's kind of his idea of a, a terrifying bad guy. So, um yeah, Children of the Corn. Um, it's not awful, but I, I I definitely think that there's you know there's a lot of movies that are more necessary for you to see than this one. Children of the Corn. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm not a big fan of it, but you know whatever. Okay, so next up, uh, Child's Play Three. Um, this is the only um, Child's Play slash. Chucky movie that I own um, because I'm not the biggest fan of this franchise um, so I've only been picking them up when I I'm only going to pick them up when I see them you know really cheap and this was really cheap so I thought I'd go for it I do plan on trying to get all of the franchise eventually because I'm a bit of a git for a franchise you know um, I just can't leave alone um, I'm a collector what can you say um, I don't really remember this movie that well. I think it's something to do with a, like a ghost train haunted house thing. Um, but I, I don't totally remember. Part of the reason I picked this up as well is because this was a very controversial film in the UK because of its um, stupid association with the James Bolger murder. Um, I won't I won't go too much further into it, but that's Child's Play 3. Next up, uh, A Clockwork Orange. Um, this is Stanley Kubrick's masterpiece. In my opinion, the uh, tied for the best film ever made. Um, I'm not going to go too much further into it about how much I love this film because I could drone on about it for hours, honestly. Um, yeah, so A Clockwork Orange, um, the uh, classic um, sort of uh, dystopian crime thriller, um, very disturbing scenes in it. Um, yeah, this is uh, a great movie. It follows Alex and his gang, uh, the Droogs, as they um, kind of go around town um, being evil and awful and doing shit. And then he ends up going to prison for murder and takes part in an experimental um, therapy. Um, uh, what's it called? The Ludovico Technique. And... Um, Basically, it's to designed to wipe his mind from, the, you know, wanting to be involved in violence. And um, it kind of um, does all sorts of crazy things to him. And it kind of, it turns him into the um, the literal clockwork orange. And that's kind of the whole point of the plot is that he becomes this thing that is synthetic on the outside, but mechanical on the inside. Um, and... Uh, sort of loses his free will as a result of that. that. That you know, if we kind of impose these restrictions on ourselves, we don't have the will to necessarily do what we want. Um, so yeah, I mean it's 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 a classic. So if you haven't seen a Clockwork Orange, you should go for it. Um, like I say, I think this is 
from the pure point of view of, of like how well made a film can be, I think this is the best film ever made. Um, in terms of, you know, sheer content and, um, you know, enjoyment, I would say this is tied with The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. My two favourite movies, The Clockwork Orange and The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay, so that pretty much wraps us up for this week. I'll be back in about two weeks to do more of these. Um, make sure you're checking out Sequelitis as well. That's on my channel. Um, I did the Hostel series. I'm working on another video or a set of videos to go up in relation to Sequelitis. That's going to be my main output on this channel now. This channel's m going to be much more focused on film um, because obviously I'm doing the podcast. That's where I'm doing my outlet for you know music stuff. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with more DVDs for you um, in part four. It will be part four, yes. So until then, um, sayonara.